All right, now let's deal with the styles for the icon itself. So that's right here, and we're adding an absolute positioning. We're setting the margin top and margin left. So that's this selector here. So we'll add position, absolute, margin top. So the margin top that we set here was kind of a rough value. We were just trying to see what would roughly align it, but it would be nice to know where that margin is coming from. So we can use a calculation instead. So what that's going to be is half the size of the icon. And so the width here that we're setting for it is 100 pixels. So it would be 50 pixels plus the padding at the top of the box. So 50 plus the 22. So that would come out to 72 pixels, which is pretty close to what we roughed out here. So now we could just put that number here, but I think because there's a connection between this width and the padding here, we should use a calculation instead to make that relationship explicit. So I'm going to add a variable here for padding and we'll set it to 22. And then let's use that within our padding property here. And then for our icon, let's set the width. So I'm gonna use width within this icon property and we'll set it to 100. And so we'll use the width inside of the width here. So we're gonna set the margin top to the width divided by two, which is gonna equal 50, because a full width is 100 and we wanna bump it up 50 pixels because that's half of the icon. And then we're gonna add the padding to it. So we'll add the padding. And all of this we want to convert to a negative number because this is going to move it up, which requires negative rather than down, which would be positive. So what we'll do is add some parentheses around this whole thing and times it by negative one. And then this value is what we want to pass to px2rem. And we'll add some additional brackets around that whole bit. We'll save it, we'll refresh in the browser, and there we go. Now if we want to adjust our padding or we want to adjust our width, we can do so and the margin top will be correct. So now how about the left margin? And so this is going to get a little bit tricky and it might be tempting to use just a basic pixel value for this. And that would be fine if you need to do that. But we'll go through the exercise here of making this relationship explicit by using an equation. So what we want to do is take the width of the entire box and select half of that. So divide that by two, and then we'll subtract the padding and that would position this element so that its left edge was right in the middle. And then we'll want to subtract half of the width of the icon as well. And that will bump it over so that it's directly centered. Now it might seem like overkill to create this equation, but let's do it. It's kind of fun sometimes. So we'll add margin left. And again, we're going to take the width of the whole item. So we need this value right here. So let's call this box width in order to disambiguate it from the width of the icon. And that's gonna be 223. And we'll pass this box width into the width here. And it's also being used as the height. So let's replace it there. And so what we'll want here is the box width divided by two, and then minus the padding on the side. So we'll minus padding. And then we also wanna subtract half of the width of the icon. So we'll subtract the width, which is set here, divided by two, and then we'll pass this whole thing through px to rem to convert it to rems. Let's see how that worked out. We'll save it and refresh in the browser, and now we have a perfectly centered icon.